What's up everyone, my name's Timmy and today we have an introduction to VFX modding for use with the Trove. Now I'm going to try to cover the basics like moving your position, changing your size and color, and talk a little bit about how local space works in order to get you all started. Hopefully I cover everything correctly and if you have any questions or comments or criticisms please feel free to leave them down in the section below so that I can be better for you all. Now before we get started I just want to say that the guide is going to be under the assumption that you have a little bit of modding uh, experience already and that you already have all your files extracted from your archives. So after you have that all done and you have Popcorn FX installed and open, you're going to see yourself at a screen like this. First thing you're going to do is add your Trove project. In order to do that you want to click on add and you're going to want to try to find your Trove game folder. Now if you do have some modding experience you should be able to find this pretty easily and once you're in your live folder you want to want to find particles then VFX and then click on your popcorn project .xml. After that click open and it will add it to your projects pane over here. Now I'm not going to do that because I've had mine added for a long time and it'd just be better for me not to do that now. So what we will be working with first here is a pretty much start from scratch FX because it's just going to be easier for me to show you each uh, technique and how it's to be used and hopefully I can cover everything um, thoroughly enough for you all to understand. I do want to say before I get into it that I have learned all this on my own. I have no formal training and I pretty much just gone with what works for me. So hopefully it's right. It may not be 100% correct. It may not be 100% the way that you should be doing things, but it's the way that I've learned how to do, the way it works for me, and uh, hopefully it'll help you guys out at least getting started in the right direction. So I'm going to scroll down here and find my guide VFX. I created this before I started the video and it's basically just a simple um, FX with nothing going on on it. So if, I, if you right click and click on new asset and click on FX simple, it will create a new FX for us to, to edit. And that's basically what I did right here. Uh, this is completely unedited. Also while we, while we get into this, I just want to give a disclaimer out to, to, to you guys just to let you know that popcorn FX, at least for me, on my computer, and my computer is a pretty decent computer, uh, it, it, it hangs a lot. It freezes. The program will say not responding sometimes. Um, and I'm not sure if that's just the way the program is made or if it's just my computer. But if this is happening for you, please, please, please be patient. There are times where I would say something and the, the entire program would freeze for five to ten minutes and I would just leave it be and when I came back it would unfreeze itself it would save my file and everything would go as it should so please be patient please don't think that just because it's freezing that you can't get anything done just give it a little bit of patience so first thing you notice is we have a uh, renderer a particle, particle effect going up 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 on our scene and with no image so I think what we're going to do first is talk about how to stop the movement the reason we have movement going up, 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 up like this is because whenever they, you create a, a simple effects from scratch, um, it automatically gives you this spawner script. I think it does it just to show you a little bit of movement. Um, so if you look in your spawner script here, here, and you look over here what you have, you have your life, your size, your color, and your velocity. Uh, now the velocity will, will be what's given our movement to our renderer. So we're going to comment that out. So in order to comment that out, we're going to do forward slash forward slash in front of whichever thing we want to comment out then hold control and press enter when you do that that will build your spawner script and any changes that you made in your spawner script will take place in your scene which is very important um, next thing we're going to do is give our billboard renderer which is the image that we see in our effect we're actually going to give it an image that we can see other than this default replace me picture so we're going to click on billboard then we're going to click on diffuse and then we're going to find an image that we want. Now, in order for your images to work in game, you will need to use a DDS image. Um, I will. I think I may have a guide already up showing you how to save the DDS images. If not, I will make another guide for you all, or put a little image down below for you all to see, so you can see how to save that. So I think I'm going to just put something simple, uh, maybe this ice shard. So now we have our ice shard. You see, it's it's not not pink replace me anymore and we have no movement because we took our velocity away from our spawner script so 
the first thing we're going to talk about is moving our position. Um, there's a couple of different ways to do that, and the first of which I'm going to show you is how to basically do it manually through adding a position into your spotter script. So type in position equals float 3, because if you look over here in our um, our spawner script the stuff over here I'm not sure what this is called uh, you'll see that it has position and you'll notice that it's float 3 it's float 3 because there are three values that you need to give for your position your X Y Z coordinates and so that's basically what we're going to do so we have um, let's just do 0 on the X axis we'll do 0 0.2 on the Y axis and we'll do zero on the z-axis. After you're done with that, make sure you write it just like this or the script will not know what you're talking about. And then press control enter. Now you'll notice instantly that our our uh, renderer moved up a bit, our ice chunk moved up a little bit, and we can move it to the side if we wanted to, uh, or forward, I think that would bring it forward, yes, and then we can maybe do a negative point three over here and it'll move it to the left and you can just toy around with that um, and it's kind of nice to do it in the spawner script because you it's just more visible um, the the amounts that you're moving it so you kind of know uh, it helps me a lot to do it through the spawner script I'll just say that um, also there are tons of things that you can do in your position um, for instance if I wanted to say that I want my y-axis to be random between negative 0 0.2 and 0 0.2 then I can add that there and now it will start going in between those points at random places um, I'm not sure how the speed is calculated to be honest with you um, but I do know that that is a way to give it a little bit of movement in between two points um, like I said, I'm kind of learning this stuff on my own as I go, and hopefully as I learn more, I'll be able to teach you all even more. Um, but that's a little bit of uh, something that you can do with the position. Uh, now there's another way that you can do it that's a little bit more uh, user-friendly, I would say. And in order to do that, we're going to leave our position like that, but we're going to create a sampler. Now when you create a sampler, a sampler is usually something that you can reference in your script later on to give some kind of movement or positioning or uh, something like that to your main renderer. So we're going to go ahead and give ourselves uh, a sampler shape. And we're going to click on the shape here and change the shape type to a sphere. Now you notice that our sphere is very very large here and this won't work for what we're using and I'll show you why. So basically we're going to tell our renderer that its position is being given by this shape's position. So we're going to click on spawner script, we're going to click on position, and we're going to erase the float 3, and we're going to type in shape underscore 1, because that's the name of our shape sampler, dot sample position open parentheses close parentheses now press control enter now once we do that you'll notice oh that's strange you'll notice that it starts spawning all these crazy different places and, and the reason it's doing that is because we're sampling our position from the surface of the shape that we created and our shape surface is much too big for the purposes that we need so in order to remedy this we're going to click on our shape we're going to select the radius and we're going to make it much 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 too small to have a big big surface like that so if we do 0.001 it's pretty much small enough for us to use and now instead of typing numbers in our spawner script for our position we can actually drag with our little widget here exactly to any location that we might want it and it's just really really helpful for us um, and it's much much user more user friendly in my opinion um, and it's just easier that way. So the next thing we're going to talk about is how to man manipulate the size of our renderer. Now you can do it in the spawner script just like the position before 
um, it's pretty much self-explanatory you make the number bigger uh, the size gets bigger you can also give it a random size between two different points uh, let's say 0 0.5 and 0. Point 0 0.05 and 0 0.09 and that will give it an er erratic movement between those two sizes it will, it, it's it's kind of good for some uh, something like maybe a heartbeat or something like that but it's not great if you want something really uniform whenever it comes to like growing and shrinking and growing and shrinking and that's where the nef next method comes in so let's go ahead and erase this random make it 0 0.9 and now we're going to go down to our evolvers now right click on your evolvers click new evolver and find C particle evolver field once you add your field find the drop box for your field and click on it select size and you'll notice that our renderer disappeared that's because instead of getting our size from our spawner script it's now getting the size value from the size field so if we go ahead and raise the values over here on our graph you'll notice that it makes our renderer smaller or bigger you can make it as big as you want as small as you want you don't have to worry about typing numbers in your spawner script and the really cool thing is that you can use it to make it grow larger and bigger in a much much more uniform way it won't be so random between the points it will go from this size to this size and then back now it is a little bit erratic because of the way that we have this set up so to make it a little bit smoother instead of jumping from this size straight to this size I would suggest right clicking on it click subdivide and take you your middle point that you just created and bring it up and now it's going to go from this size gradually up to this size and then gradually back down to this size and you can subdivide as many times as you want to make it as complex as you want and the more that you mess with your field evolvers you'll find that they are very very useful in getting some really cool effects going on so I suggest that you play with these as much as you can the next thing we're going to talk about is the color now color is very very similar to our size except that it uses four values instead of just one and um, I'll show you how that works now so if you look at our spawner script and you see color you'll see float four uh, that are that means there are four values for this and we can give we'll go ahead and put our values in at one 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 uh, which is basically just everything at default now if we were to come over here and raise this up to maybe five it would give us a really really red tint um, that's because that is our red value I, I believe it's red green blue then the last one is our alpha so you can mess around with that and you can um, just like with the size and just with like the position you can give it random values between two values if you want uh, and you can just play with it like that the other way to do it is through using another field evolver so right click on your evolvers go to new evolver and click on C particle evolver field just like before except for this time we're going to select color now when you select, select color it will go dis it, it will be invisible again because they're we're all back at zero values so let's select the red green blue and alpha and raise it up just a little bit so we can see what we're working with so now if we wanted to maybe make it really really green we could deselect or toggle off our other curves our red blue and alpha curve so now that we can only select our green curve so we can bring our green way way up there and this is kind of will help you isolate each color and um, or each I guess each attribute to the color and really pinpoint the color that you're looking for whenever it comes to uh, finding that specific hue that you need for your effect and the cool thing is that you can like you'll see right here uh, this top bar is the color that you're going to be getting so if I was to um, deselect green and bring up uh, the red you'll notice that it's going to go from this really cool green value to this yellow value and it's going to flash that every so often and you can subdivide these as, as well to make it more smooth um, and and the more you work and the more you work with this the more you'll realize that the more subdivisions the more individual colors you can fit onto your field um, 
and that can really give you some cool stuff. You can even get like a, uh, you can make it go through the whole spectrum of colors if you wanted to, if you wanted to make it that complex. Um, and it just really helps to give you a little bit of life to uh, your your bland basic uh, billboard renderer. And that's pretty much the most I could teach you about the color for right now. The last thing I want to talk about in this guide is local space evolvers. Um, they're very, very useful, and it's only going to take me a second to talk about them, so let's talk about them. So if we right-click on Evolvers, and we go to New Evolver again, and this time we click on Local Space, that will add a Local Space Evolver. And what that basically does is it, it binds your VFX to the the scene project within the game. So what that means is if, if you add a local space, um, this is going to stay where it's at at all times and it will follow the movement of whatever it's attached to. So say you, you make some dragon eyes and you, and you want them to stay in the dragon sockets whenever you're flying and running around, you gotta ha you're going to have to add your local space evolver or they will basically stay where they are and your dragon will leave them behind. When you start to move, the VFX will stay where it is and it will stay put. Now that can be a problem but can also be really uh, really useful for creating some cool effects like trails. So if we were to um, get rid of our local space evolver uh, it would not follow whatever we attached it to but the cool thing is we can go up and click layer and click on infinite and then let's give it some movement now we could give it some movement by uh, uncommoning the velocity and have it going upwards, but we can also have it going upwards by clicking on our physics evolver and giving it a constant acceleration on our y-axis, which is the middle value. So if we give it one, you'll notice that it starts to go up. If we was to give it two, it would go even farther up and at a quicker speed. That's basically in t the intensity of the acceleration that we're changing there. And that's the, the Y axis that we're doing. So the cool thing about this effect is since we don't have a local space evolver and it's spawning infinitely and it's moving, um, it will basically leave a trail behind it when you move because it will constantly respawn at the beginning position that you placed like your dragon's eye sockets but it will fall behind as you move so it will create a really cool trail effect if that makes sense hopefully I explained that well enough um, but if you if you mess around with that you can really get some cool trail effects and stuff I suggest playing around with the local space but you definitely definitely need it if you want your your effect just to stay where it is on your mount, on your mod, whatever you're using it for. Um, but that's basically it for this guide. I really hope it was helpful for everyone. I tried to go over in depth uh, all the basics that I could think of. Um, like I said, I've learned this stuff on my own, so hopefully I haven't told you anything that's too wrong, and hopefully this is enough information to get you at least started in making some of your own really cool custom effects, because I believe the more that we can educate all these incredibly talented artists that are already in our modding scene, about how to do VFX modding, the quality of our stuff is going to go up so much and I'm excited to see what you all come up with. That being said, I'm going to be relying on you a lot to give me suggestions, ask me questions, give me comments about what you would like to see in upcoming guides because I'm kind of at a loss on what to show you. I know there's a lot of stuff that I can do, I'm just not sure exactly what to put it in the guides. So if there's anything in specific you want to learn how to do, Please don't hesitate to ask me down in the comment section, or you can private message me, uh, or you can find me over in the Trovsaurus Discord. Um, I'm always happy to help, and you usually are helping me grow as uh, a VFX artist by asking me questions. So I really appreciate it, and I thank you for your time, and I hope this was helpful. Have a great day. Thank you so much for watching.